We're standing in Parc das Nassois, a neighborhood in Lisbon. But if you look around, it looks very different than the normal trams and hills and water that we see in lots of Lisbon neighborhoods. Well, this is a little further north, kind of close to the airport, but it's still considered Lisbon. And we're going to check out what this neighborhood has to offer. Hey, expats and travelers, I'm Kaylee. Come join me. We're in Lisbon to break down some of the top expat neighborhoods you should consider living in if you're interested in Lisbon. We've researched and asked other content creators who live here what they think the top neighborhoods for expats are. Make sure that you check out our whole series. Stay to the end to see my and Kaylee's rating on whether we would live here or not. Now, on to this episode about Park das Nações. Park das Nações, or the Park of Nations, is part of Lisbon, but it's extremely different from most of the other parts. And what do I mean by this is the architecture. It's along the river, but instead of monuments, trains, and small parks, you have high rises, glass windows, and a cable car. It is known as Expo because it was the site of the 1998 Lisbon World Exhibition and has much more of a contemporary feel. Yeah, this neighborhood is quite unique compared to the rest of Lisbon, and it's not for everyone. It's been growing in popularity as a place to be in Lisbon, but with more space and a different atmosphere. Now, because of this, prices are on the rise. This district is located just east of the airport. It's quite a narrow and long strip of about five kilometers with a lot of neighborhood along the water. You have the cable car and a view of the Vasco da Gama Bridge, which is the longest bridge in the European Union at 10 miles or 17 kilometers and costs a few euros to drive on. Now, when you move, a bit more inland from the water, you'll find that it's actually well connected because it has a couple of train stops and Orient Station is in this district which has inner city trains and buses. It has a few metro stops to get to other parts of Lisbon and of course buses. So it is a little more remote but there are public transportation options. For those of you with a car you do have the Vasco da Gama bridge over here which gets you to the Stewball region. There's a boardwalk to stroll on, shaded areas to sit on a bench, larger sidewalks for jogging, and the Oceanarium is here. The Lisbon Oceanarium was opened in 1998 during the World Exhibition and is the largest indoor aquarium in Europe. It's modern on both the inside and outside and there are a lot of beautiful things to explore around the aquarium. There's a big CUF hospital here. However, since the neighborhood isn't too big, it's limited with what's actually in the district lines. The good news though is that there are plenty of things right along the border and just right outside the border. You have the one hospital within the neighborhood and then there's another big hospital, Sam's, nearby. Both are private options. Also nearby, but not within the borders, are a few private and international school options. So, it's not a bad place if you want to live here with kids and put them into one of those schools. A car might make the commute a little easier, but it isn't a must because a few of those schools are pretty close. There is a lack of historical buildings here since it's a newer neighborhood, so if you're wanting to be around older architecture, this might not be the place for you. Not all buildings are necessarily brand new, but for the most part, things don't look older than about 30 years or so. It's easy to see that there was a lot of forethought that went into the design of this area, which makes sense as they were prepping for the World Expo. There is a lot of urban art spread throughout the area though. There are also a lot of gyms here too, but you'll see that a lot of people are actually exercising outside as well as it's nice to run along the water with a pretty view, right? So things can be more relaxed here with a little less crazy nightlife scene that you'll find in other districts. There are a lot of green spaces, a big mall with lots to offer, and even a casino if that's your kind of day or night out. The Altus Arena hosts a variety of things to do, from concerts to annual events. Because of how modern it is and the space it offers, you'll notice that housing prices are high here. It's rare to find a T1 for rent under a thousand euros. They do exist, but you have to dig a little bit. If you're looking for a more spacious T1 though, budget for a minimum of a thousand euros and a realistic range would be a thousand to twelve hundred. For more space, like a T3 of at least a hundred square meters, plan for a range of eighteen hundred to twenty five hundred euros a month here, but act fast because apartments don't stay on the market long here. You can find a mix of furnished and unfurnished. Now like we said before, the district is newer than other parts of Lisbon, so most places aren't super dated, but you'll still find places in need of renovation. For something like that, you might be able to buy it for under 200,000 euros, but if it's newer, then it's going to be closer to 250,000 euros or more. That's common. Now, this is for a small T1. T3 apartments are certainly more reasonably priced when considering the square meters. A good range to target would be 
250,000 to 300,000 euros. But of course, in some new developments, the sky's the limit. So it might be nice with a lot of space, but is it too expensive? It's part of Lisbon but seems a little bit far from the main monuments of the city. It's close to the airport though. Let's chat in more detail about the pros and cons of the neighborhood and give our ratings on if we'd live here. All right, so what did you think of Parque das Nações? It felt totally different than any other part of Lisbon, but definitely the typical thoughts that you have of Lisbon when you see like the cobblestones and of course the tram, the iconic tram, it is totally different. What do you think? Yeah, it seems like a different city. Yeah. I, I think it seems like a different city. I, I found a familiarity in it because Kaylee and I used to live in Singapore and it felt very much like Singapore. So there's an area called Marina Bay and down in that area, Marina Bay, Clark Key, it felt very much like that. It was, it was not quite like Disney World or something. No, but it's like this modern futuristic feel, the way that the architecture is, the way it's laid out with space, that you have people running along the water, that you have the cable car. It's just the way that that feels, it just gives you this different vibe compared to other parts of Lisbon. And it was the same vibe that you get in those areas of Singapore. So that, yeah, I was familiar. Yeah, there's, there's this element of like something that's well planned, well designed, and the feel it gives you, the natural atmosphere it lends to the area, it was recognizable. Yeah. It was nice. I like it. And it seems like it's just becoming more and more popular. So even though it seems a bit outside and disconnected from Lisbon, uh, I mean, accommodations are going fast, whether that's to rent or buy. It seems like it's just growing in popularity that people want to be out in this area. Now, if you do like your variety of foods, you're still going to have that as options as well. There are several upmarket restaurants in the area too. Uh, which I'm not really an upmarket guy. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking, right? Always talking about budget. Now, I go back and forth on whether you need a car here because it seemed like it is walkable down by the water in that area, which a lot of the neighborhood is the water side, has the water side, but then you've got the bridge. We go a little inland with the apartment buildings and such to get to other parts of Lisbon or just the country. It seems like you might want a car here. Yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you. I do like the fact that there are a lot of opportunities to exercise outside in this area. That way you can kind of take advantage of Lisbon's nice weather. That's very true. So that's a nice, nice one, but there are still gyms as well. So you have options, a bit more options there compared to if you're down like in the heart of the city, <laughs> like you're not going to yeah. want to run. You're not going to be able to run. Um, it's going to be hard to run, I guess. So this gives you that nice option there. Yeah. And then the train station, the proximity of having audience station there, being able to, to get out to other areas of the country, that's awesome. And the proximity to the airport. Yes, and the Oceanarium is really nice. It's a big Oceanarium, well known. It has a lot of cool things, not just in there, but also around. They've done it really nicely like that. So you can really spend like a day in that area because of what there is to do. Yeah, so it is remote. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly stretched away from the city. So if you're wanting to like experience Lisbon, it's, it's not, not Lisbon. It. It's yeah. not. It's not it. Um, at all. So let's go ahead and talk about whether or not we would live here. We're going to rate this one to five, one being that we would not want to live here, five being we would absolutely want to live here. Um, where do you stand? Okay, I'm going to give this neighborhood a four. Okay. And I really liked it, but it doesn't feel like you're in Portugal is the thing, which isn't a bad thing, but if you want to be like you're living in Portugal, it doesn't really feel like you're in Portugal. So I guess that's why it would be a four. I go kind of back and forth between four and five because I really liked it and it featured a lot of cool things, but I think it's more on the four side because it's lacking in a little bit of uh, history and that feel of what Lisbon would feel like. What do you think? I'm gonna go five. Oh, I actually okay. loved it because I think it reminded me of Singapore a lot and that's a place that I, that I really enjoy living in. Um, okay, so does it have a, a cultural, like Portuguese cultural feel? Maybe it, it, it lacks a bit in that, um, but so does like the Algarve in that's my true. opinion. Yeah. Like there, there are, and, and that's even unfair to say, it's just a different type of, of Portuguese culture. culture. Yeah. So I think that actually, the kind of look and aesthetic of Parque das Nações in some areas, especially by the water, reminds me a little bit of places that we have been in Algarve. Hmm. And it's still Portugal. So it's like maybe a more it's modern 
Portugal. It's not Lisbon. It's not Lisbon. It's, yeah, if it's you're thinking Lisbon. you're going to see the tram and such, it's that's not the place for you. But it is still very livable, and there were. It did seem like there were a lot of apartment buildings. You could get space. You could get new, and modern. There's parks, so it's quite livable. It's flat too. That's a yeah. good thing um, for a different area, like for different people too in the different areas. Um, not much of a night scene though. Right. So I'm I'm not an Alfa Senia. I'm not a Lisbon guy. I'm a Porto Lens. I'm a Porto guy. <laughs> I'm a Tripeiro. So um, so it doesn't matter for me that it doesn't feel like Lisbon. I actually I actually kind of like, like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't cut that out. Um, so that that's where I'm going to sit on this. And if you guys want to check out other neighborhoods that you feel like you might want to enjoy living in, check out this playlist right here where we have broken down just like this other neighborhoods that are livable here in Lisbon. Now let's get moving. Bye. Bye.